Uh, I grew up oh about 40 minutes from here and it was one of them places I'd never been to and I said you know what I I want to see what it's all about and I pulled it up on the internet and it seemed really interesting it is called Piney Creek Ravine Natural Preserve an Illinois nature preserve it, this is located in southern Illinois this natural area has been formally dedicated as a sanctuary for native vegetation and wildlife. It is maintained in its natural condition so that present and future generations can see the Illinois landscape as it appeared to pioneers. This living example of our natural heritage is also valuable for scientific studies in ecology, geology, soil science, and natural history and may provide habitat for rare plants and animals. Okay, so we're gonna go check this thing out. The reason I'm really interested in it is because on the internet it has ar archaeological um, <coughs> carvings that were done from 500 to 1000 AD. So obviously by some type of Native Americans where they did uh, art on the cliffs and on the rocks and it's really interesting they're just uh, I don't know what the proper word for it is uh, they're not paintings but they're like shallow carvings be the right word all right so we're gonna check it out and see what it's all about and it's supposed to have a waterfall also and a lot of neat rock formation and it's down in a ravine obviously it's got a creek some trails and I want to see those uh, ancient artifacts be pretty neat so I'll get a little closer and then I'll turn back on all right guys we're to the actual trail that where it actually starts now you had to walk down a regular wide trail just to get to the real trail about a quarter mile but we're finally here uh, I did see a blue bird already um, that was it we have a chance at seeing a copperhead uh, of course the waterfall and I'm like I said before I'm interested in these ancient hieroglyphics this is one of them beautiful days guys it's the uh, today's the 18th of October and it's chilly in the shade but it feels real good in the Sun the rock art at the Piney Creek Ravine Nature Preserve has been placed on the National Register of Historic Places by the United States Department of the Interior May 31st 2001 all right, pretty cool. Here we have a little galley with a wooden bridge. What kind of bird is that? Huh? I'm not sure either.
starting to see the, the creek. <coughs> Here are blue jay off in the distance. The majority of these trees is, seems to be cottonwood and cedar. Now I'm starting to see the large rocks. I guess Lily's excited to get down there more than I am. She's heading on down, downhill, guys. I think this is generally dry this time of the year. Uh, it can at times have a lot more water and apparently after a heavy rain of course. I don't know what we're supposed to do except stay on the rocks I guess. Now I think we just go, I think we're just supposed to, oh it's got a trail still over here. Yeah the waterfall ain't gonna have no water right now because it hasn't rained in so long. This is pretty neat. I'm just going a little bit and then I'm coming back to the trail. I'm just going to this corner down here. It's pretty neat, guys. Especially this time of the year. This is the time you want to hit places like this. This is when the leaves are falling off the trees and it's perfectly 60 degrees. And, and a weekday when nobody's down here. Lots of neat little ferns and moss covered rocks and thought it was funny one of the things that said you couldn't do on the sign it said no canoeing and we're parked up there with a canoe on top of the car. <laughs> you would have to have a lot of rain to to decide to canoe. This thing's pretty much dry right now. Boy, Lily's liking it, ain't you? Yeah, you like it here, don't you? Yeah. I'm guessing it's further down the trail. Okay, it says rock art this way. You can go two ways, it says rock art to this way. So we're gonna go this way. That's the main thing I'd like to see. I'm sure it'll have a thing that I can read from once we get down there, describing exactly what it is. Dangerous area, please stay on marked trail. Well, yeah, I guess it could be. You wouldn't want to fall right here. I 
that's normally where the waterfall would be and there still is a quite a big hole down there scour hole and it's full of water there's ain't no waterfall in it whoa that's a big old big old hole I can't help but to go down there and show the show this part to you guys I'll get a little close just not real close boy that thing is we're 40 feet up in the air right here it's just a now this would be really cool after a rain because the waterfall would be right here oh it's 50 50 to 60 feet wowzer wow you got to come over yeah this is really cool Now this is cool. I like this. Whoa. That rock down there just happens to have two eyes and a mouth. I think it's just coincidence, but boy, that is a giant rock down there. It's really neat. No, it would be better when the water's up after a rain. Boy, it would be really neat to see. Especially if you get down, right down in it. I gotta get down there because I don't want my battery going dead because I don't have no I don't have no spares. I think I'll make it, but I wanna be sure. The worst thing if my battery went dead, I should have stuck one in my pocket. I wasn't thinking. I see why they call it a ravine now, my goodness. Now, this is cool. This would probably be some excellent mushroom hunting in the springtime. It's a real clear stream too. It's not your typical Southern Illinois water. I'm just panning, panning the camera up and down so I get good views of everything. Because I never can tell exactly where I'm looking, so I look down and then I slowly go up real high like that and it gets the view of everything. Alright guys, I think we're getting close to what we was, oh man, there's even way more than that. We got a big old cliff down here. And we actually have a hole with water that seems to stay here. And there went a fish took it off. Yeah, there's some fish swimming around. I don't know what kind. Boy, there went a fairly decent one. I'd say they're green sunfish is my guess, but I can't tell yet. They took off so fast I never got to see them. There's actually fish swimming around that took off. Could be bass. 
I'd say they're sunfish. Well, they took off in a hurry where they were giving me a chance to see what kind they were. Look at that. So see, there's two branches that meet together, that, that creek and then this side. Wow, look at that up there. My gosh, there's still a trail over there. And then there was one that went down. I don't even know where we're supposed to go. I'm going to look up here real quick. Oh, the water's going that way. I don't know yet. Oh, the trail, we're supposed to go here, I guess. See what that sign says on it, because there, I think you can still go that way too, but it shows a trail right here. But it doesn't say it leads to the artwork. Now this is just, that is awesome, guys. Beautiful. It is really cool. I think we're supposed to go right here. That's neat right there, isn't it? Look at that. <clears throat> okay the art artwork is right here it says we're getting real close to it rock art to the right All right, let's go check out this artwork. Protected archaeological area, no artifact collecting or digging. Digging, violators will be prosecuted. I don't blame you. That's that'd be just totally disrespectful to do something like that to a place like this. This place is just too awesome to do that to. All right, looks like what we're looking for, guys, is right up here. I can see a sign and it's gonna have a lot of readings on it. Let's see what it's about. <clears throat> Big 
rock wall. Okay. For over 1,000 years, American Indians carved and painted designs on rock faces in southern Illinois. Piney Creek Ravine was a particularly important place for the creation of art, rock art. This rock shelter contains the largest number of rock art designs discovered at a single Illinois location, over 150 carved and painted images. Piney Creek Rock Art, although called rock art, the painted and carved images found at this and other locations in southern Illinois were not created mainly as art. Some rock art sites were sacred locations where Native Americans depicted images seen in religious visions or trances. Others served as boundary markers between groups to convey information about an important event or for other purposes. It is difficult to interpret exactly what individual rock art images represent. Do the images of deer in this shelter represent actual animals or do they depict spirit beings? Are they symbols of kin groups who believed they were descended from deer? Do they represent special guardians seen by young men in vision, quest, or dreams? What do you think? Most images in this shelter date from the late woodland, A.D. 450 to 900, and Mississippian periods, A.D. 900 to 1550. Really? The images include deer, birds, serpents, crosses, meandering lines, and human-like anthropomorphic figures. Some of the figures have wings, others appear to have horns or horned headdresses. Still others hold objects including spears, bows, arrows, and shields. Horns and weapons can represent spiritual power in Native American art, or these spirit beings. Pictographs are paintings. Archaeologists think the pictographs on the rear wall were made by a grinding yellowish-red iron ore, limonite, into powder, then mixing it with animal fat to make red paint. Charcoal drawings are another type of pictograph found in southern Illinois. Petroglyphs are carvings. They were created by repeatedly striking or rubbing against the rock face with a harder rock. Some petroglyphs were later ground to remove peck marks and create smooth surfaces. These legless winged petroglyphs are a stylized representation of a Mississippian period, 950 to 5, 1550 AD, image that appears on a shell and copper objects throughout the southeastern United States, part human, part bird. This figure is often depicted holding weapons or other objects. Many Native Americans believed that whoever carved or painted an image of such a dangerous being could acquire its power for personal use. Settlers in the 1870s discovered the rock art in this shelter. During the late 19th and tw early 20th centuries, this was a popular site for picnics and Sunday school outings. Visitors carved or painted their names directly over the prehistoric rock art damaging or destroying innumerable images. Historic graffiti carved during that time include Masonic and other lodge insignia, motorcycles and human faces. Protected by law, repainting in the 1950s to save faded images badly damaged many pictographs. Petroglyphs were also damaged by people who chalked them into photograph them. State law now protects this shelter and other rock art sites in Illinois. Okay, let's get going. That was a long reading, but I had to read it to you guys to get a better understanding. <coughs> I think you just got to look around. They're all over. Not the man-made, uh, not not the newer, modern one. You're looking for old.
I don't know if it has signs pointing out where they're at. You're probably just you, you're probably just supposed to find them on your own. Wow, there's a big old deep hole. Look at that. Yeah. My goodness, this thing is, this place is big. I'm gonna end up, I should, I'm stupid for not bringing a spare battery. Really dumb. I should have definitely brought a spare battery. Guys, I haven't even seen any of these things yet they're talking about. And I don't know where I'm supposed to go at this point. I think that's the end of the trail. Yeah, that's the end of the trail. Pretty sure. Because it don't have any more signs leading you any further. It, it does keep going though, look at that. <clears throat> it's really long. I don't see any of these things I'm supposed to be finding. Where are they? Where's that main one it showed on the internet? The what? Oh, yeah. That's serpents they were, the serpents they were talking about. Where's the person with wings? from the internet that's what I'm trying to find hey there's my initials JM huh <laughs> my initials JM but I've never I've never even been here so definitely wasn't me they did this too I think Folks, I'm not really making out any of these petroglyphs or pictographs or whatever they're called. I haven't really seen the one I'm looking for. Uh, I know they're around here somewhere. They don't really point them out. Okay, here's one with a cow. It's a, a guy walking a bull. Yeah, it might be. Yeah. That's just wrong to do that. Here's something, look. Here's one. <sighs> Pretty 
pretty cool. It's going to film about 10 more minutes and then it's going to go dead. There's one right here. Right there. Yeah, that, one. that one's really neat. Okay. I'm looking up and down everywhere trying to find them. They said there's 150 of them. Why can't I find any of them? Here's one. Unless there, a lot of them are way up past. <laughs> God, there's the Freemason one. That definitely ain't from the 1500s. Yeah, I think that's one, maybe. A lot of them ain't. They're just idiots that ruined it. This might have been real. <coughs> well, folks, I'm kind of... Didn't get to see a lot, especially the one they're talking about here in the picture. Like this one, I didn't, I never see that one. <clears throat> and I didn't see the deer, the deer ones. Where's the deer? So we missed a few of them, guys. There's supposed to be a deer, and there's supposed to be a one with a bull, and a human with wings. I didn't get to see any of those. I don't know where they're located. Maybe they're on this rock. I'm probably just... I found that. I found a couple other small ones. I found the serpents. Could be on top of this rock or something. Too. They're definitely not up high. They're all with a head to reach. Oh, here's some. Right here, I found some. Kind of looks like people, and maybe that has legs, and kind of looks like stuff. Unless a person, unless a modern person did that. This might have been old too. We don't know, because it did show the bull on there. I think this was originally old, but I don't think 
that was done in the last hundred years. Here's some more right here. Oh, here's a deer, I think. Yeah, there they are, right here. Okay, folks, I found the deer finally. Look at that, guys. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Looks like that's the deer because you can tell by the tail it's got the little that's that's mod that's not modern <coughs> no it's, no that's that's old yeah that's something it's just hard to make out Oh yeah, it's the ones below. Them are, them are new. That's someone's. These are the old deer. You can tell by the marks. Okay, there we go, guys. We got two deer here. There's one there. But this one's real noticeable right there. That's neat. Now that that wasn't copied. That was the original. You can tell by how it's aged. It's got the spongy appearance. <laughs> yeah, see they got like a spongy appearance. Mm -hmm. That's the one that's what you want to look for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a big fat deer there too, guys. Yeah. Right where Wilma just pointed. There's a, a fat deer. Now we know how to tell the fakes from the real. The, like, the real ones have a spongy like looks appearance, like, has little looks, holes. Looks like a wing. Hmm? Yeah. It just took us a while to figure out how to how to pick out the real ones from the modern ones. Uh, yeah, right the real ones have little indentures. They have dents where they sat yeah. there and went like this. Ding 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 ding. Yeah. They're all along here. See look. Most, yeah. This is where most of them are. You can't make them out hardly anymore, though. Now, th this was real right here, these two. Th them two deer. Here's more right here. I just Here's the one with the guy with wings, I think, or he has horns. Looks like a, a guy standing there, but he has a goat ear and deer horns or something. Like half half human, half goat, or half human, half deer. Right there. And he's holding something in his hand. It almost looks like a water bong, to be honest, but I don't know what it's supposed to be. Ah. So most of them were down at that end. Well, guys, we're going to head to the crappie and walleye hole now. I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did. This is just the absolute perfect day to do this. There's nobody else here. This place is out in the middle of nowhere. There's not even a town within 15 miles. Uh, and it's real small. And... Uh, just perfectly 70 degrees. The leaves are falling off, they're turning red. What better day to pick to come down here? It's very interesting, something different to do. Until next time, hit that like button and please subscribe. All right guys, I got two theories on what I keep seeing here, where these parts that when you're walking along, they have like, it looks like metal. It feels like iron. But, so it is either iron or, or it could be, my other theory is vines that have fossilized that sit there and then they die and then they just sit there for hundreds of years and they turn into fossils and just get real hard. So I'm thinking that's what those could be as old fossils from vines that used to grow 
along the cliff. If anybody has an answer for that, please let me know in the comments below. It's either one of those two. Oh, anyway, I was wanting to go the long way right here. Because you can go out the trail and then go right across, but I want to look at this over here real quick. It's really cool. So you're supposed to go right here, but I want to look at this. This is just like an extra trail. I told you you'd like it. It's something different, isn't it? Whoa, this is a big old hole in this creek right here. I guarantee this has fish in it. Look at all the ferns, guys. There are just ferns everywhere. It is really neat. Everywhere you look on the forest floor is fern. And this creek actually has a pretty dang big holes in it now. Down there it looks like it's dammed up. I don't know if it's a farmer's road or... Boy, this is... I mean, it's shallow, but it's, a, it's still a decent-sized hole. 